Hey everybody, Yomar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another knife review for you. And today, I got another knife. Check it out. So this is my new piece uh, on my for my collection. It is made by Erucus Blumeris. Uh, this guy is very well known in, uh, South Africa. Um, he's definitely one of the more well-known knife makers in South Africa. Everybody seems to gravitate to this guy. This guy and Thorburn, um, they're kind of like leading the pack, I guess, if you want to put it that way. They seem to be leading the pack anyway. Um, along with Des Horn. Okay, so those three guys, Des Horn is pretty much the grandfather, in my opinion, of uh, knife making, uh, Andre Thornburn and Arucus Bloomerus. Now, a word about Arucus Bloomerus, uh, there's been some negative uh, words said about his work. There are people out there that have actually said that his work uh, is just a ripoff of Andre Thornburn. Now, whether you believe that or not, I don't think anything like that should be said. Uh, not just because it's something negative about the craft, but you have to keep in mind, these people do this for a living. A lot of them do this uh, for a living to put boot on the table. I mean, it's, and for anyone to say anything like that, um, it's just not necessary. You know, a lot of us are into this hobby uh, as an escape. Uh, we have a passion for the hobby. Uh, we're looking you know, we're looking to find, uh, I guess, something magical in these things that we don't find in our everyday life. And that adds to the enjoyment of the hobby. And for anyone to say anything negative about uh, someone's work is it, just not necessary. Um, and I can say that his work doesn't look anything at all like Andre Thorburn's because I've got two other... Arucus plumeris pieces right here, okay, right, and this, this, this is a really good example of his work, I've got a full dress piece right here, and I've also got another, uh, sheep's foot style, uh, regular flipper, uh, from him as well, um, I love his work. I don't think it looks anything at all like an Andre Thorburn piece. Uh, you know, I mean, I have an Andre Thorburn front flipper. Uh, I can't say that this knife looks anything at all like these two in any way, shape, or form. I don't, I don't see it. Uh, you could probably say maybe in materials or maybe the way they use materials, but it is not a ripoff. I mean, these are completely two. I'll take out the new one now. These are completely two totally different looking knives. I mean, there's no way I would ever mistake this for Thorburn. It's just not going to happen. Um, and vice versa. You know, so enough said with that. I just think it's the wrong thing to say. And if, if you love knives and you love this hobby... I don't think you have any right to say anything about anyone else's work. You don't do this for a living. I don't do it for a living. I'm here to appreciate their work and their craft, and that's it. So I'm not going to say anything more about uh, any more negative stuff. So on with this knife. Let's take a look at it because it is absolutely fantastic. Um, I don't have any specs on this piece, okay? Uh, why don't we get a good close look up of the knife? There it is right there. Really beautiful. Overall. One of the things that caught my eye was the color. This is sort of a bronze, copperish colored knife. I don't have that color in my collection. I really wanted it. I saw it and I had to have it. I love these milled lines and they're really very nice. And it's also a front flipper, but not just a front flipper. Okay, this is actually uh, an index finger front flipper. I mean, you could just easily pop it open that way. That's like the perfect front flipper right there. Uh, a lot of people don't like front flippers because they have to open them with their thumb. Uh, and some of them, you know, are 
quite difficult to open. However, when you buy a custom knife, I've noticed, though, that the front flippers on uh, custom knives are much more easier to open than production knives. I mean, uh, you know, you, you just... See, it's so so easy uh, to do that on a custom piece, simply because the mechanics are much smoother on custom knives than they are on production knives, uh, bar none. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have any difficulty opening it. I'm sure anyone who's never even opened a front flipper would have no difficulty opening this Thorburn piece. So, on with the show. Uh, like I said, I don't have any specs on this knife. I'm going to be getting them... Uh, uh, hopefully, probably tomorrow. Uh, I picked this one up at the Blade Gallery today. I agonized over it like I always do uh, whenever I get a knife uh, because, you know, the credit card bill starts to go up. Everybody knows this is not a cheap hobby. Um, but I finally just decided, you know what the hell with it? Life's too short, so I picked it up. Uh, you know, I'm going to be working some serious overtime to pay these guys off, so... You know, let's go ahead and get on with it. So why don't we show what it is that I do have. I don't have specs for it, but let me show you what the knife comes with. You get this case, really sweet case, by uh, Erukis Blumeris, and uh, it is really... It's a huge case for such a small knife, but one of the things I like about it is it's got this window in there, right? And there's this little card, which is actually the Certificate of Authenticity, Right? So the card pops out, and all the information you need on the knife is right there. So why don't I just go ahead and read that off? So this is a model piece. Uh, it's a liner lock number six. Uh, the backspacer, another one, another one I've never had. This knife actually has an M390 backspacer. Can you believe that? Whoever heard of using the blade steel of M390? as backspacer. So basically, if the knife breaks off, I guess you could take the backspacer off and get that sharpened and put that back on there. I don't know. It's a weird thought. But yeah, the knife actually has a, a an M390 backspacer, another newbie. Same thing with the other uh, Erucus uh, Blomeris, piece, Bl Blomeris piece that I've got. This one has a carbon fiber backspacer. I really think, I don't know if, if I'm right about this or if anyone else wants to correct me, please feel free. I really think this guy does a lot of interesting things with backspacers. Uh, he, every time I get one of his knives, I'm always surprised by what the backspacer is. I've never seen, a, you know, a, a carbon fiber backspacer on a knife before. Uh, Henson, you know... Hence the point, I've never seen an M390 backspacer before. Uh, the only way that it would have it would have really impressed me is if he maybe shaped the M390 into, like, you know, something with a design on it. Like, say, this full dress piece of his that I have. That would have really impressed me uh, with the, uh, using that as a, putting that on the knife uh, rather than just making it a plain block of M390. But still, never heard of that before, so really unique. Um, again, the colors caught my eye on this piece with the copperish tone, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, um, lightning strike carbon fiber. Uh, so anyway, yeah, the knife has lightning strike carbon fiber bronze. Uh, it's got titanium bolsters, titanium liners, and it's also got a 3D pocket clip on the back. And the pocket clip, I'll hold it up as you can see, it's got mill lines in there. And the ball is pretty common. Everybody sees that on custom knives. That's nothing new. I mean, I've seen that on a lot of the, a lot of other maker knives. Is that that ball, which uh, is used to uh, hold the uh, hold your hold it to your pants, so it doesn't pop off and gives it a nice good grip. It's really a beautiful knife. This is not a one of a kind handmade piece. I'm gonna say, it's not. It might be, but I'm pretty sure it isn't. Uh, yeah, the knife runs on IKBS ball bearing system. It does not have ceramic bearings. It's got tool steel bear uh, tool steel bearings. Um, this thing flips so nice and easy. 
Uh, the centering on this knife is pretty dead on. I mean, you can take a look at it right, uh, there, right there. So it's pretty much dead. Um, beautiful work overall. I love the smoothness of the knife. Uh, plus the fact that it is a small front flipper. Even smaller than my Andre Thorburn piece. And that brings me to bring out some size comparisons. So there's my Andre Thorburn front flipper. As you can see, the Andre Thorburn front flipper is actually much larger than this knife right here, than the uh, Eric's Blumaris piece. So. So let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. I brought out some other knives because I know everybody's getting kind of tired of my um, uh, Spydeco Swish Bowie. I know I'm kind of tired of showing that piece and my ZT. So we're going to start off with uh, just a couple of knives here. We're going to start off with a few knives, actually. How about we start off with a, a Kershaw Leak? Everybody knows the Leak, right? So it's about the same size as a Kershaw Leak if you own one of these knives. Uh, this knife here is actually discontinued. They don't make it anymore. This is the Orange County Choppers. Um, this one comes in tin box. Again, I've done videos on all these Kershaw discontinued knives. If you want to see what these knives come with, um, you can check out my channel. Um, I talk about this knife here. Uh, yeah, so that's it. There it is up against the, the uh, Kershaw Leak. And how about the Kershaw Orange County Choppers Blur? There you go. So I use these two knives because they're very, very common in the knife world. A lot of people know these knives. Um, you know, anyone who's not new to the knife world knows that these two knives here, they're at least, I'm going to say, about a decade old. But everybody pretty much knows these two knives. Uh, a lot. They become like everybody's pretty much everybody's everyday carry for like the last five years. So I decided to go ahead and use that knife. Um, something much more popular. Uh, how about the uh, Sebenza 21, which is now the Sebenza 31, I don't, which I'm not going to get. I don't see the point to it. There really isn't much of a change. Right, and let's see. How about a large Sebenza 21 for, so you can see how big the knife really is. We put it up against that one. So you can see it's a really tiny, tiny knife. I mean, it's not super tiny, but it's a small knife. It's not very, very large. Uh, so if you're a small carry person, uh, this may be a knife for you. Now, keep in mind, this knife is actually a model knife. So, you can buy this knife on his website. It's not going to look exactly like this. It'll probably have a different design on it. But it'll be this size and it will be this model. Uh, so, there you have it. So, for Rukas Bloomers, I mean, the guy does a lot of different things. Change things up. He's really into that. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if this knife is out someplace where the handle has the Damascus on it and this has the bolster work on it. You know, he'll change it up somewhere. Um, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there was like another crafted M390 on another knife like this one. Uh, and, and that's what's great about custom knives is that the varieties you get and the varieties that these knife makers present to you uh, they're trying to show you up these pieces in a lot of different ways uh, that may catch your eye. And next thing you know, you'll have a collection of completely different knives with all different types of materials used in other ways. I think that's probably one of the things that I love about this, about this hobby is that you're always going to find uh, something different that you will not find in a production knife because you know in production knives they always have to worry about cost and how much it how much it costs to make and can we do that on a on an assembly line and still be cost effective whereas a custom knife maker the knife is all about you what do you want on your knife i'll make it i'll do it you can either choose from one of these models. I may even make completely different model just for you. I, I've never, I don't know if anybody else out there has ever had that experience, but I'm pretty sure that's available to you if you're into, if you're into custom knives. Um, 
everything is customizable on a custom piece. That's the whole idea behind it. So that's where all your money goes. That's why you're paying hundreds of dollars for these beautiful works of art to have something that... To have something that no one else in the world has. This is my true one-of-a-kind custom piece. Uh, my Andre Thorburn uh, custom piece with the eagle head on it. You know, I'm going to actually have another knife made for me. Probably going to be uh, an L48 uh, like this one. But it's going to have like a trout on it. So I really can't wait to see what that's going to look like. Um... Just the excitement of knowing you're going to get something made just for you is, is you know, can't, can't, can't compare. Can't compare. Uh, and, yeah, it does cost a lot of money, but, you know, life's too short. You know, you're not going to be around forever. You might as well enjoy what you can while you have it. So, back to the knife. The knife is very smooth. It opens really smooth. I love the fact that this is just the perfect size uh, you could whip this out. It probably wouldn't scare anybody to death. It's just a beautiful work of art. It really is. M390 backspacer. That's insane. Um, and again, uh, the lightning strike carbon fiber caught my eye because I've never seen it in this color. Usually you see it's always either blue or silver, but this copper bronze thing, man, I saw that. I had to have it. Really just had to have it. Uh, the milled lines on it are really, really nice. Uh, kind of interesting, though, that it's not centered. You actually put it all the way towards the, the side over here. But still, you know, that's what makes the knife unique in its own way. Uh, and, of course, the biggest thing is the front flipper. It is an index front flipper, but as you just saw, you can't open it with your thumb if you're into that. Uh, but, yeah, it's really an index finger front flipper, so that makes it even nicer. Getting a look at the back of that. Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So there you have it. My Arucus Blumeris. Liner lock number six. With lightning strike carbon fiber, bronze, and titanium bolster. This is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off, hoping you'll find this piece of sharp art in your collection. Thank you so much for watching, and you guys have a fantastic evening.